Jackson a beating right to death with a fireplace poker and fatally shooting Bohe and Limburger. Jackson was sentenced to die by lethal injection, but that may not happen if the Supreme Court decides it's cruel and unusual punishment. Lena Bohe's brother just can't believe it. He says murderers like Woody Jackson are why the death penalty even exists. It was a shock to all Altonians the day the three were killed. Two of them were only in their 20s, killed in cold blood by their own landlord. To this day, the question of <clears throat> of why it happened plays over and over in Rob Bohe's mind. To say he and his sister were close is, is an understatement. We were like an arm and leg. <clears throat> we were just that close, he says. When this happened, I didn't know what to do. She was just friends with everybody. She would give you money out of her pocket. She would give you a ride somewhere if you needed it. But on an early, <clears throat> but on an early February morning, Woody Jackson took Bohe's sister from him. It took only a jury. It took a jury only 19 minutes to find Woody Jackson guilty of killing her and two of her co-workers. A month later, he was sentenced to die. Now, Bohe wonders if it will ever, <clears throat> if it will ever happen if lethal injections are deemed unconstitutional. How can that be cruel and unusual punishment? Was he thinking of that kind of stuff when he shot my sister and two other people? He wasn't thinking about cruel and unusual punishment or anything, says Bohe. In fact, Jackson originally pled guilty to the slayings before changing his mind. Jackson was originally sentenced to die on the anniversary of the murders, but that didn't happen because of the automatic appeals process. Now it may never happen at all. Let the death penalty go on as it is, says Bohe. It's a death penalty. You kill people, you kill a lot of people, you've got to pay for that. On October 3rd, uh, Attorney General Drew Edmondson asked the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals to temporarily put a hold on setting execution deaths until the Supreme Court makes its decision. <clears throat> uh, her killer ended up passing away uh, in prison. He ended up dying of natural causes. But uh, <clears throat> I feel for this whole movement and 
people that, you know, the families of these victims and stuff, because I've personally seen out of six siblings, she was our, she was the only girl. And I've seen the type of destruction it, it causes the family and all the, the, just everything bad that comes with it afterwards. And it's hard to kind of get over that type of stuff. To this day, I mean, that was in 2003, and to this day, you know, I was only 16 when it happened. I'm mean, the youngest of all six, and there's still just so much stuff that I think about day in and day out. Whenever something's brought to my mind that reminds me of her, or if I randomly think about her and different things, I watched it. Uh, I watched it take uh, my dad. I mean, my dad was terminally ill, but. He survived. I mean, he, he kept living his life, and he was supposed to pass away in 1999. They gave him six months to live, but, you know, he lived through all this stuff. And then once my sister passed away, being that it was his only daughter, I kind of watched it tear him apart, and I watched him kind of just let himself go after she passed away. Being that I got two daughters of my own now, um, age of six and five, I couldn't imagine what the things that you know he was feeling and stuff whenever he was going through that and I don't like to think about that but I know there's more people out there that that um, have to go through this and you know unfortunately that are gonna end up going through the same thing that I, <coughs> I just feel for you guys and thank you for being here thank you Jerry I know that was difficult to do yes thank you he needs that strength he needs your prayers um, her brothers are still hurting. They're hurting for their sister, you know? I mean, as natives, brothers and sisters, I think siblings, we have that extra level of love, if you know what I mean. Um, so right now, we're gonna um, go right into a memorial song uh, for Lena. And our singer, uh, John, here has come up. He's gonna honor 